Africa we want in Aspiration 6 is Africa whose development is people driven, relying on the potential of African people, especially its women and youth, and caring for children. So Agenda 2063 is not a program of the AU, but belongs to the African people. Now the official theme for the African Union's 27th summit is Year of Human Rights, with a particular focus on the rights of women. But African leaders will gather in Rwanda's capital Kigali amidst a deepening economic uncertainty, worsening food security, fragile peace in various regions, and the ever-present threat of terrorism. So as leaders are expected to unveil an African passport and elect a new African Union Commission chairperson next weekend, what progress has been made on the much-discussed Agenda 2063 and what issues are likely to dominate discussions as they attempt to chart the continent's future? I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Now, according to the African Union Commission Chief of Staff, Jennifer Shiriga, the Assembly of Heads of State and Government will start its work with a closed session aimed at discussing strategic issues before electing the new chairperson and the deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission. CCTV's Girum Chala sat down with Shiriga to find out what else is on the agenda and the expected outcomes. Thank you very much, Madam Chief of Staff, on behalf of CCTV. Now, what political, economic and security issues should top the agenda of the African leaders at the 27th African Union Heads of State Summit uh, soon to be held in Kigali, Rwanda? Well, very much prominent on the agenda is the issue of um, the financing of our union. So the heads of state will be engaging and talking amongst themselves on this very important issue of how Africa can finance the activities of the Union. Um, there will also be issues of peace and security will be um, also discussed, the, the various hotspots on the continent. So the leaders will be um, also talking about uh, these issues and sharing um, their thoughts and information on these very important aspects. And then of course there's the issue of um, the elections, as um, everyone may know. The African Union Commission is coming to um, its four-year cycle, the end of its four-year cycle, and uh, we anticipate that there will be an election to bring on board a new chairperson, a new deputy chairperson, and members of the commission. So this is another um, item that will be on the agenda of the summit. The, the Legal Council Office has been very much on top of this um, issue and um, the names that have um, been put on um, the table for election have been um, brought through the various regional consultations as provided by the rules um, of, of the, the union. So this is a, a process that has gone through um, very rigorous um, legal uh, preparations and um, when we get to the summit um, it will be, I think, we are very ready to, to take this process forward. Mm. The launch of the African passport will be one of the highlights of the upcoming summit. Now, what is it significant at a time of one of the oldest and most stable blocks of the nations, the European Union, is reeling under Brexit? Well, the very fundamental underpinning of our union is the issue of integration of the continent. And uh, the passport comes at a time when we are really deepening the discussions on our integration and uh, taking forward the integration agenda through our Agenda 2063 uh, program. So the issuing of this passport is a symbolism. It's a symbolism for the issue of free movement of people on the continent. We already have a few countries that have put in place mechanisms for um, African citizens to cross borders without um, too much uh, problems, without the need for visas, for example. So this passport um, is for the continent a symbolic uh, gesture that um, I think is, is laying the foundation 
for this issue of free movement of people to really take off as part of um, a very important part of our integration agenda. We've um, got the, the heads of state who will be given um, the, the passport. We've got the ministers of foreign affairs. We've got um, the members of the permanent representatives um, um, committee who are based here in Addis Ababa, as well as the, the heads of the regional economic communities. And thereafter, it will be determined how we move forward. How do you assess the performance of the African Union under the stewardship of Dr. Kosazana Lamini Zuma? And what kind of leadership does the continental body need going forward? Well, I think the main um, success of our commission in the last four years has been to really make Agenda 2063 a buzzword. We've also identified flagship projects, which are projects that have been begun during this term, but which have a life beyond this present commission. So the new leadership coming have the opportunity to take forward a solid foundation, and they can bring the work forward on um, Agenda 2063 10-year plan, as well as the broader 50-year vision. So I think this has been the major success um, of, of our leadership to put in place uh, a vision for a continent that is prosperous, that is integrated and that is peaceful. At the upcoming summit in Kigali, the African Union plans to launch a continent-wide electronic passport. First agreed upon in 2014, this flagship project aims to facilitate free movement of persons, goods and services around the continent. CCTV's Girum Chala spoke to officials behind the ambitious project. The launch of an African passport will be both symbolic and significant for Africa's overall transformation and is a milestone for integration. This is not just a issuance of a, docu a travel document. It is more than that. It is symbolic in that it is meant to encourage our leaders to open up borders to our citizens. African Union heads of state and government, ministers of foreign affairs, among others, are the first batch of people to own the historic passport. Business people are next in line. This passport is hoped to force the trade within Africa, boost integration and social economic development. When one owns the Africa passport, the long lived probability inside the continent will be resolved. Scholars argue that the passport has potentials of addressing the great problem of Africans migrating to Europe in search of greener pasture. It will open doors of opportunity for the people in the continent. No doubt that uh, in terms of promoting free movement of persons in the continent, in terms of uh, accelerating free trade, uh, 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 free trade on the continent, you need movement of people in particular business people right now uh, in order to facilitate that movement this passport is going to be key countries such as seychelles mauritius rwanda and ghana have taken the lead in ensuring easier intra-africa travel by relaxing visa restrictions and in some cases lifting visa requirements altogether africa hopes to see visa-free continent by 2020. group jala cctv addis ababa ethiopia We're going to take a short break now, but when we come back, my expert guests will help unpack how the African Union plans to chart Africa's future to stay with us.
Welcome back to Talk Africa. Now to help unpack the African Union's plan for the next year, I have expert guests standing by in Lagos, Dr. Ola Bello. He's the Executive Director at Good Governance Africa in Nairobi, Hans de Marie Hengup. He's an analyst at the International Crisis Group. And with me in studio, Dr. Adam Zolo is a political scientist at the University of Nairobi. Gentlemen, to you all, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. Let's start very briefly by looking back over the last four years with the African Union. And Dr. Olabella, to you first, though. The African Union is due to pick a new African Union Commission chair in its upcoming summit in uh, Kigali. First, assess for us the African Union's performance over the last uh, four years. What would you say? have been the key issues over the last four years? Well, um, the, the challenges um, are well known. Um, I think at the top of everything is the challenge of um, insecurity um, in pocket of the continent. I would also say the issue of um, people and prosperity and the role that the African Union can play in that um, is very much um, top of the agenda. Um, but also we've seen um, some of the traditional issues now rising right to the top of the policy agenda at this moment, um, including issues um, such as immigration and, of course, um, um, creating common um, regional goods um, out of um, what seem to be um, shared challenges um, such as climate change. I think the African Union has been very much um, involved in all of that progress um, on each and every one of them has been uneven. But I have to say, um, Dr. Lamini Zuma, as it were, um, has tried to do her best in the circumstance. As we get into the debate further, um, I'm sure um, some of the other guests would agree with me um, that she works um, within a very significant constraint to my mind, some of them internal, right. some of them external to the African Union. But I think in the circumstance, um, she's acquitted herself um, fairly well. Right, uh, Hans de Marie Hengup. I almost shared uh, the analysis of Dr. Olabello. Uh, I will have add uh, the fact that uh, they have tried also to enhance and to prioritize the question of democracy and human rights uh, in uh, Africa with uh, Africa Development Court, uh, who have made some progress until it's not late. Uh, completely operational, let us say in terms of judging African leaders, uh, also the traditional issue or the traditional concern of African integration in terms of uh, the perspective of having maybe an, a, a same bank for Africa, not just the role that the, the African Development Bank is playing, uh, like the World Bank, but also what, for example, IFMF is playing the same thing with uh, African Union. The issue also of trying to have uh, a same currency, the mobility and the traveling uh, within Africa for African citizens or wherever is uh, they are they are located. They are located. Right, Dr. Adam Zolo, your your perspective. Well, basically, I agree with most of uh, my colleagues, but I think also the African Union has tried to create uh, an image of a united Africa. And I think uh, the ICC question that faced Kenya and other African countries, uh, the AU came as a block to tell the rest of the world that they'll always move together. And I think they got some concessions insofar as uh, that was concerned. I think one can also say that uh, the AU has tried to create institutions so that uh, African problems can be solved uh, in African soil, basically to say that uh, they don't need to be babied uh, so much and to that extent that they are taking a walk and deciding their own destiny. Right. Uh, Dr. Olabella, so there are a few issues that, that have come up here that have uh, been at the forefront of the union's agenda over the last uh, four years. Democracy, human rights, insecurity, immigration. How do you see the continent, though, as having gone about dealing with these, these issues? What's been the success? Well, um, we're, we're hard at work um, here, and um, I think um, significant progress um, has been seen in, um, on some of these um, policy agenda. I think um, one of the things we've not actually mentioned here um, is the Agenda 2063 that has been unveiled um, during the tenure of um, Dr. Dlamini Zuma, um, a bold policy vision um, looking at Africa um, over a 50-year perspective. 
But I think going forward, um, the African Union will be better placed to help move ahead um, a lot of these issues um, in more positive direction. Um, if it becomes bolder in its ambition, and we work concertedly to uh, make its um, bureaucracy more nimble. Um, what do I mean by this? I said earlier on that Dr. Lamini Zuma has tried to um, play as best with the hand she's been dealt. Um, if you look at some of what they're grappling with um, at the African Union right. internally, I think um, it's fairly obvious to me that internally uh, there are a number of issues they're grappling with. The African Union is now not the European Union, much aligned, maligned as the European Union has been. I think there are important lessons um, or models one may want to um, borrow from. I'm um, including empowering the African Union Commission to actually begin to help um, deliver on some of these um, sizable responsibility we've, um, we've uh, entrusted. But I do want to uh, throw your sentiments to uh, the other guests on this uh, program. Uh, Adam Tolo, do you agree though that, that the African Union has achieved much success, uh, more success than it had previously achieved over the last uh, four years? For me it's a mixed bag because uh, in terms of creating standards, uh, let's say for example in guidelines on how issues of Africa, whether human rights, whether elections, whether democratization, then you can say that those standards, principles have been developed. But in terms of real achievement to follow up on these guidelines and standards, then I would say that there has been a mixed uh, result. Because if you look at across the continent of Africa, then on the one side you'll find countries which you would have say have consolidated democracy, Botswana, Ghana, South Africa, to name but a few. But you also have situations in which uh, democracy is still protracted. Uh, to that extent one can say that uh, the African Union has not come really strong in such cases. We also have institutions which have been created but which are not necessarily uh, getting results like the African peer review mechanism which uh, is not being financed by the very African countries which created it as a wing of the AU. So it's a mixed bag for me. All right. Hans de Marie uh, Hengop though, we, we are talking about a lack of a follow-up mechanism uh, at the African Union but uh, terrorism and insecurity, peace and security issues have been really at the forefront uh, of the African Union. Your take on that? Let us say broadly, uh, I share the view of the, my predecessor speaker. Uh, that means, first, African Union is like victim of some structural lacks. Uh, first, the fact that uh, a significant portion, uh, the great majority of its budget, is funded by uh, outside, precisely the EU, also the implication that uh, uh, broad and uh, organization like the EU could have uh, in African Development Bank makes that uh, they can have the completely ownership of the superstructure which is supposed to be African Union. Also the agenda, you don't, you can have the complete uh, possession of the, the, the your agenda if uh, the funding of this agenda is depending from outside. Uh, the predecessor have also evocated the question of uh, internal divisions and internal debate within African countries trying to play the game of power. Uh, when we are putting that uh, regarding the specific case of the fighting against terrorism, uh, we can see, for example, the challenges between uh, African capacity for immediate response uh, against crisis and the African standby force. From white side, you have five countries, and precisely two among them, uh, South Africa and Chad, who are trying, uh, which are trying to to focus only on the, this first force, African uh, capacity for immediate response uh, to crisis, because they play a significant role inside this force, right. and they are putting like some obstacle to go forward to the African standby force, and is in some way to. It should be a shame for African and for us to see that to, the, to implement African standby force, which needs, according to the estimation, one billion of dollars. We are still in the process of funding, uh, seeking funding outside, while African countries putting together uh, have three trillions of dollars of GDP. Right. Uh, 
Dr. Olebello, though, the whole question of funding, because um, as of June 2015, uh, the African unions of state, the African Union heads of state, had committed to contributing about 75% of the AU's uh, working budget and 25% to this AU peace led support operations by 2020. But we're still talking about funding being a major challenge for the African Union. What should be done? Well, I, I mean, um, as people say, it, you know, you always have to follow the money. I, I think this is very fundamental. There is clearly um, um, a, a capacity constraint within the African Union in terms of the amount of funding it can put um, to the pursuit of um, a lot of the lofty objectives we've set out. But also, uh, I think very significantly, um, the technical capacity within the African Union um, as, as, um, as a bureaucracy to help um, deliver on this agenda. I mean, let's make no mistake about it. Even if we put Kofi Annan um, in the position of the African Union chairwoman um, for the next four to eight year horizon, he may well not be able to make a significant dent um, on in a lot of the problem we're talking about. Why is that? I think externally, there are three fundamental questions we have to resolve. Um, what would be the role of the African Union, for example, in helping to bring coherence um, to a number of the strategic partnership and alliances that, are, that African actors um, have formed with other global blocs and players in the economic, social, political and other sphere. I think for me that's fundamental. All right. Uh, let's look forward now because the African Union uh, Commission chair will be uh, elected in the upcoming uh, summit. Let's look forward now, uh, Hans de Marie Hengup. What should be Africa's priorities moving forward? What kind of a leader would they be looking for to push Africa's agenda forward? I think the, what could be the ide ideal is could be to have uh, someone like a former president of someone very charismatic, which could be we, we can be able to push uh, African president for more willingness and more involvement uh, within uh, the AU Africa Union. In terms of uh, priority, I am sure that things will not necessarily change because we are still facing since uh, 50 years the same structural issues. Name first the question of the democracy and human rights, the question of the development, and also the question of uh, security. With also with now more and more security that I can call uh, indirect or informal security, uh, which is different to what we used to face in the time in the time of OUA with uh, interstate conflict. This is more and more uh, civil wars and international uh, civil wars. All right, uh, Dr. Adam Tullo. Uh, basically, uh, what I think, I agree with the structural issue, but from a different perspective. Uh, if you have a structure that constrains the occupant of the African Union Commission chairperson, then it doesn't matter who's there. And the current structural challenge is that the African Union chairperson does not have what you can call autonomous powers the occupant of that office is constrained by the structure that gives the assembly of union of states and therefore the heads of state more power and therefore he or she will always be at the mercy of the heads of states. One of the reasons one can say where the e why the EU made a lot of strides despite the challenges was that the EU uh, commission was made autonomous from the states and therefore whoever took over that position became the champion of the EU as an institution away from the states that created. And unless that happens, in our case, it doesn't matter. Do, you think, though, do you think though that uh, the African Union is on the right path? It's on the right path. They just have to put what they put in their constitution, in their rules of engagement, they have to turn it to reality rather than leaving it as an ideal. All right. Uh, Dr. Olabella, you have the final word on this. Uh, do you think the African Union is on the right path in charting Africa's future? Well, I think the AU um, is on the right path, but um, I have to say that um, very importantly, there seem to be two big elephants on the road. Um, the first for me um, is um, resolving that contradiction in the way Africa's um, 
regional infrastructure, uh, integration infrastructure is currently fashioned, what would be the relationship between the African Union as the overarching body and the several regional economic communities on the all-important question of um, economic integration in Africa. We talk about the EU's um, responsibility in this respect, but it does not have all the power. So how do we make sure it works um, in a much more concerted, much more seamless um, fashion um, with, with the different um, regional economic communities? The second point, um, I think it does not matter who we put in the commission. The number of things we have to shift um, which would really um, empower and um, enable whoever is um, coming in to, um, to succeed, Dr. Dlamini Zuma. For me, I think, um, you know, the way the, um, the eight commissioners and the, de um, the, the vice chairman um, of the African Union Commission are, are elected, we need to give the, um, the person of the, cha um, of the chairwoman much more say um, in who, um, you know, how they are selected and how their portfolios um, are distributed. We also need to give the African Union Commission uh, more oversight powers so that we don't just go to Addis and make commitments and when nation states in Africa do not follow through, there are no clear sanctions or pressure for them um, to really um, fall right. in line. I, I think these are some of the fundamental contra um, contradiction and we really have to um, address. But the question of funding and capacity building, I think, um, is very important. And that's very clear to me, especially on the question of... Um, um, governing the extractive sector in Africa. We have worked closely with the African Union, and right. I see that a lot of the rhetoric um, oftentimes do not match um, with, with, um, with the reality on ground. I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. But thank you to my guests for your insights. In Lagos, Dr. Olabello, he's the Executive Director at Good Governance Africa in Nairobi. Hans de Marie Hengup, he's an analyst at the International Crisis Group. And with me here in studio, Dr. Adam Zolo, he's a political scientist at the University of Nairobi here in Kenya. To you all, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the program. And remember, you can join the conversation at home through Facebook. Twitter and YouTube. And do join us again next week for another edition of Talk Africa. Goodbye.